Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin and the two Tams are with me here today. Tam McManus, Tam Cowan. Delighted to have them here on what is a fantastic day to have the programme. We're all in a good mood and you'll understand why very shortly. You'll know already um, Scotland's exploits mean that we topped our nation's group. You can give us your thoughts on it. All you have to do as well is share the stream uh, with your friends, tell them about it and hit the subscribe button as well. We'd love to hear from you you can exchange your opinions with people on the feed and obviously put points to our panelists here today and we'll try and answer to the best of our ability and if you download the plz soccer app you get all the breaking stories as well um, we are giving away uh ruffy's um a pair of ruffy's gloves he's going to sign them uh and then they could be yours um, we have had competition ones. we've got some great competitions coming up I have to say with lots of really good stuff but Ruffy's uh, going to sign these and we'll send them out to the winner if you can answer this simple question Ruffy played in a game in 1978 against uh, Holland we needed to actually win I think 4-1 in the end uh, we beat Holland 3-2 which player scored two goals in Scotland's 3-2 victory over Holland in 1978 in that World Cup group uh, it was for a moment just one of those games where there was a, a, a pivotal moment where we thought Oof, we might just be able to pull this off and get out of the group that we were in but it didn't happen in the end so can I say two things first up yeah. that, 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 that is a hard question that you think should be easy well, it's because the game itself, you only think of one particular goal on it. Yeah, absolutely. Like scrambling about. That's a tricky one. Yeah. Point two, how do you know they're definitely Ruffy's gloves? Well, as he did mention to us, these are, these, are the one, these are the ones that... <laughs> no, that's a pre-watershed answer. Come on. He did say to me, these are the ones I've played. <laughs> these are the ones I've played in Argentina against Brazil because there's not a mark on them. <laughs> If there's anyone at home knows what I'm getting at, <laughs> send us the answer in the postcard. Yeah, absolutely. It's your, it's, your classic, it's your classic Tom kind of question. But nevertheless, uh, well worth it. He's signing them. Fantastic. Um, now, listen, um, John Nicholson says, Hi, Peter. John from uh, Kikakun in Australia. Have you been there? No, I don't know where that is. Um, but, uh, <laughs> some weird names in Australia. Got some absolutely mental names. Um, and great also, funny. The one and only time we were there, this is true as well. The one and only trip to Australia years ago, all my relatives were out there, but my mum, um, uh, Isabella, my late mother, or Isa, and oh, the fun in our family when we all went to Mount Isa. Yeah. You know, it's one of the famous places. <laughs> oh, that joke, yeah. never more thin. Well, uh, Graham Wardrobe says, I've tuned in from Vietnam. I, uh, he tunes wow. in every night at 10 o'clock. That's brilliant. Um, and uh, it's been absolutely incredible. I'm just reading out all the people and where they're from. Um, Aldo says, I'm not a big fan of uh, Porto, as the hippies call him, but what a debut. Well, look at his face. He cannot, he, he's bursting uh, to talk about it. Gordon Harriet's in Thailand. So oh. there you are. Um, so I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people on this program are going to have to offer some apologies on this feed um, so Hundreds. yeah well if there's thousands on here um, I think the Rangers fans need to get a raffle ticket because <laughs> there's a fair few that don't like them uh, but I anyway that was based on many days we quip uh, repeating what Stephen Gerrard had said in the post match, yeah, I, looked, uh, I looked thought that was great yeah I thought no I think any sensible Rangers fan would have secretly had a wee chocolate of that. I thought it was a great wee moment yeah absolutely anyway listen uh, we're going to talk about it because it was Ukraine nil Scotland nil okay we rode our luck Tam but you need that yeah I think you do I think that when you go away from home listen we've had uh, most of our good results have been at home away from home we're, we're kind of hard to beat but we've not had many big results big wins but we went away we've been hard to beat obviously the, the result against Ireland was crucial because it meant we can go there and afford a draw um, we went over there, we played well, we defended well, you know, we're a, a good collective unit defensively and uh, we, we, we done what we, what we needed to do and we got the point. So I think it was a great performance and a great result, you know, seven points out of nine, uh, the three games we've played was a great return and that's what we needed to do and we done it. Yeah. Um it was great. You can't, you can't fault it at all. Um, I didn't see the full game. I was running a wee bit late. It was in uh, Glasgow City Centre at tea time. 
bashing up to see the game. Just saw Jim Goodwin coming out of Grieve Sports with his Ukraine tap. I, I don't know what uh, <laughs> I don't know what had inspired that for Jim, but um, did they work out? Ryan Porter is not absolutely superb. I agree with Tam. I know what Tam had a bit of flack for coming out and uh, backing Porteous, but he was great, and I mean, you know, that, that even that challenge that he put in at the end where they had a right good chance, that was that was up there with like kind of Bobby Moore's tackle against Pelly back in the day, it was an absolute cracker, and uh, you know, and it was great, I think it was a lot of folks uh, kind of man of the match, and sitting in the house, I, I just celebrate it, then Ryan Port still threw a plastic tumbler at my wife, and, uh, and that was that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, such a, he's such a moron, isn't he? Um, I mean, when you when you consider, um, you know, the the type of team that he put out there, even in the back line, Henry is not. It's not somebody who's like you're looking at 30, 40 caps under his belt alongside a debutant. I mean, they were quick. They were able to play this high line, which I just thought was tremendous, Tom. Yeah, I think Jack Henry's been outstanding the three games. You know, he, he played every game, he's been superb, and I think he, he kind of guided Porteous through the game at times. Both of them are quick, and that enabled Scotland to play a high line. I think that's important, you can't drop too deep against these teams, you know, because eventually that pressure will tell. We got up the pitch, we got in touch with our midfield, the midfield got in touch with our forward, and uh, we condensed the game, and we defended really well. Henry was excellent, but Ryan Porteous, I think that was a coming-of-age performance from him. I think that he has took an enormous amount of, of stick in the press from, from many people. Um, I'm sure when that team was read out last night, a lot of, a lot of supporters were thinking Portis is a bomb scare. I said, yeah. I don't know why we're playing him. And uh, he shut a lot of people up last night. Listen, he's no, been, he's no squeaky clean. I think that you know, some, of, some of his antics on the pitch you know, have left a lot to be desired, but in the main, I think he's, he's been a bit of a scapegoat for Hibs at times. So I'm delighted for him. I'm delighted to put a good performance in. Uh, I don't think he'll be at Hibs long term. And that result last night might have got him a big move somewhere else. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, I think he will go. I think he's waiting to January to um, obviously sign a pre-contract somewhere else. But as I mentioned to Tam prior to it, I thought he would start. If he starts and suddenly you get game time and then you, you put in a performance like that, Tam, suddenly, no, you know, the price goes up. Maybe the calibre of club goes up no, that's looking at And, him. you know, fair play to Stevie Clark, because I'm, I'm guessing the easy option for him would have been what Declan Gallagher yep. put him straight in there. And, you know, Declan, I know, I know his uh, forum uh, when he went to Aberdeen wasn't that great, and then he's back at St Mirren, and obviously uh, there was a kick on there for the, the, his Scotland career. But... He's got caps under his belt, and uh, that would have been an easy option. But no, Portis didn't put a foot wrong. You know, yeah. it's brilliant. And I agree with Tam says as well about um, Jack Henry because I didn't see live the Republic of Ireland game, and when I heard that he had scored, you assume oh it must have been a corner or something, and he was up for a header. But when you watch that goal, great movement for, for yeah. start to end, it was absolutely brilliant. You yeah. know, so the other, it's all coming together. Well, absolutely. I mean, obviously, from from a Scottish point of view. Um, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves because we are notorious um, for suddenly getting too optimistic and then it all comes clattering down. But I think it's only right and proper that we sing the praises of team players, individual performances. I mean, we were talking about it today in the office and we reckon, you know, alongside Portis, we'd put down four names of four players that, I, you know, we all thought were outstanding uh, over the 90 minutes. Portis is one, um, McGregor, Hickey, and as ever, Craig Gordon. Yeah, I don't think you'd, you'd venture too far from that. I thought that Aaron Hickey, for a, a young lad, he has improved massively since his hearts. I mean, going to Serie A was a big move for him, you know, to go abroad, which I, like, I love to see. You want to see, because everybody in Scottish football goes down to England. You know, that's, that's just your normal route. You do well in Scotland, you go to the Premiership. He took a chance, he went to Serie A. He's, he's learned to defend over there because one-on-one -on -one defensively he was superb. He's quick, he's strong, he's strengthened up. He's at Brentford now, he's playing the English Premiership. He's earned that move and he looks as if he could, him and Patterson, I mean, we used to, we never had a right back, you know, yeah. two or three good left backs, now we've got, now we've got uh, full backs coming out with ears, so I think the future's really bright, we've got Portis and Jack Henry, yep. you know, so all of a sudden now, you know, you're, you're looking at a really, really strong Scotland team. Yeah, have. especially the left back position as well, because... If you look at it, we're always worrying about trying to accommodate a Tierney and an Andy Robertson. And then you've got Greg Taylor, to his credit as well, who comes in there and he was steady on that left-hand side too. So you still get... I mean, when you look and you say to yourself, wait a minute, you've lost Tierney, you've lost Robertson. Then you start to think to yourself, there's a wee bit of panic in here. But he came in and, and that back four, 
you know, coped admirably on the basis that they were playing that high line. I mean, that, you know, a year ago, time you wouldn't even have contemplated exactly. that. I mean, suddenly the old phrase of embarrassment of riches comes to mind, and you never thought we'd have said that about Scotland um, three, four, five years ago, you know, and there was, when there was all sorts of stuff we were hearing about, you know, uh, Scottish people and the whole, you know, uh, being big enough uh, to even play international football, you know. I know it was your dear friend that came out with that cracker, but um, even then it was a, it was probably a nonsense, you know. Um, you play to your strengths, and I think that's what the Scotland team's doing. And I like the fact that they all they seem to be playing for each other. Tam will know a lot more about that, having uh, played fat boys days, but you definitely sense that as a supporter watching it, um, that you're getting that for the players. And it's just if we had, can imagine if we were able to just pluck an out and out goal scorer. For somewhere they know, you know, it would be if you were able to get what like, up, you know, a, a, a McCoy star, whoever, you know, or, uh, it would just be absolutely brilliant. But um, yeah. that, that does be getting greedy then, you know. I think you just take take everyone on board. The very fact that we'd, we'd um, you know, we uh, that was a good that, they, they, that Ukraine team were no mugs, mm -hmm. and I, I, I only a lot of the stuff in this program comes back to com, comes back to betting. Uh, and I'm stuttering and stammering because my mate who's got a share in the horse at Banger the day I didn't bet it and it went at 11 to 1. Still smarting, Peter, that's that, but it's fine, am I really here? <laughs> no, I'm actually 2.26 at Banger. <laughs> Oh, oh, I was that, do you know that? Do you know no, that? that, that do, you know anyhow, that, do you know that thousand yard stare when I'm looking at everything? Where is he going with I've that? I've been in a wee bubble <laughs> since then. I don't even know what I'm talking about. How did Scotland go in last <laughs> night? But, uh, no, what I was going to say, Ukraine last night, and a few of my pals at like a wee punt, they said to me right away, you could have got them about 75 year door for Ukraine, which on paper, when you forget Fancy getting you carried away as a Scotland fan, yeah. it, and you know what, it'd have been a nice wee insurance policy, because mm. they needed to win, and all we needed was a yeah. draw or a win, you know, you'd have been laughing either way, but... But well, it's just great. And to hear Stevie Clark, did you hear well, this interview I'm, after the game? I'm just about to he, get to he that. He was like Ken Dodd after the game. When you ever heard that for Stevie Clark? Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, he, he, he was in, in, in fine mode. Uh, before we get to Stevie Clark, it's a great debut for Portis, and a lot of people are, are complimenting him. Callum Sharp, however, says Portis is still a bomb scare and he'll never change. Well, Callum, I mean, if we had that attitude with everybody in life, you know, nobody would ever get on. You've got to give people the ability to progress, to learn, uh, to develop, and and to change. Um, and I think, you know, it, it is one game, but it's a great game for him. Um, having spoken to, ironically, the week before I was with his dad, um, and we were sitting down chatting and his dad was saying, you know, it would be, it would mean everything to him, even to get 10 minutes on the park for Scotland. Right. That's what, it, that's, that was his dad talking, just sitting, having a natter about the boy. Um, and, you know, and he said, he, he would just love 10 minutes just to get on and maybe get a sniff uh, of playing for Scotland. It would be fantastic. And to go 90 and put in that performance is, is sensational. And as far as debuts are concerned, our reporter Adam Binney had a wee look at some memorable ones for Scotland. Ryan Porteous was impressive last night, but where does he rank in our top five Scotland debuts? At number five, it's Stuart Armstrong. Armstrong's international debut in 2017 was hailed as one of the best he's ever seen by Scotland manager at the time, Gordon Strachan. He set up Chris Martin's important late winner against Slovenia to keep Scotland's World Cup qualification dreams alive. Coming in at number four is Frank McAvenny. Alex Ferguson called up McAvenny to the squad for a World Cup playoff qualifying tie against Australia at Hamden in 1985, and he scored Scotland's second goal in a 2 0 win to qualify for Mexico 86. At number three, it's Charlie Nicholas. Nicholas made his Scotland debut in 1983 marking it with an important equaliser against Switzerland in a European Championships qualifier to complete an impressive comeback from 2-0 down. Straight to number two is Ryan Porteous. The Hibs defender was drafted into a makeshift back four last night. Scotland knew a clean sheet would guarantee promotion to League A of the Nations League and Porteous's defensive dexterity was crucial to their success. Claiming top spot is Scotland legend Dennis Law. Law scored the second goal in a 3-0 win over Wales as an 18-year-old playing under Matt Busby for the very first time. It's hard to argue against Law and his debut goal en route to becoming the nation's all-time top goalscorer as Scotland's greatest ever debut. Well, do you agree with our top five? And let us know if you think if anyone has been missed out. Oh, oh I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the good thing is it's all subjective, isn't it? Really, depends on your generation, depends on you know how well you remember it. That's five that we put in there. Portis in at number, was it number two, Tam? 
Yes, there's a gentleman who made his Scotland debut, didn't even kick a ball, but uh, scored the winner. He didn't kick a ball for Scotland, but scored, scored the winner. winner. Aye. On his debut? Yeah. Steve McManus? No, Joel Craig. Stephen Craig's father. You remember Joel Craig? Yeah, he played for I Thistle think it might have been against Switzerland in the 70s. He came uh -huh. on as a sub, uh -huh. and his very first touch, Heather, and it was a winner. So he came on as a sub, good bit of trivia, yep. didn't he? Did he kick the ball? Uh -huh. Scored with the heed and uh, secured the points. Might even have been a friendly. I'm saying points, but what a debut! Imagine doing that. Oh, you know. it's fantastic! Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Joe. Uh, I know Joe's uh, son Stephen well uh, as well, and I think he's. <laughs> His dad, if you're out there watching it, Joe, we're sorry. Aye. You're in at number eight. We just did the, oh, we just did the top. Here, we did the top five. So good, good. I remember, um, obviously, uh, Maka. Um, you know, <laughs> from from his debut onwards, just a, a mad life. But Charlie's. I mean, Charlie scored a goal against Switzerland that I will oh. just never forget. I mean, he, he can. The ball's coming over his head, and you know how difficult that is. Over his head, touches it with his right volleys it with the left end at the back of the net and away for a dance and then off to the cotton club later <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Cathy Sini. That, was, that was his bar wasn't it? that was his bar yeah Cathy but uh, but it was absolutely sensational but listen he was he was brilliant the boy and, and to be fair a lot of people on here are very very uh, complimentary about Ryan Portis some people just obviously are Portis haters but listen um, we're reading out the, the majority of people who, who know their football. How, how must he have felt, Tom? I'm thinking as a supporter who's got no idea. That boy, he comes in, he's probably delighted enough at getting his debut for Scotland. It's in a huge game. He then realises he's playing for the start. He then, near the end of the game, makes what could have been a match-saving uh, tackle. And then that final whistle goes, and then that's it. We've, we've, we've done what we were looking to achieve and he's been front and centre. I mean, it, it must have been buzzing, doesn't he cover it, does it? No, I, I mean, I think when you look at it, he's probably, he's went to the squad late. He probably didn't think he was going to play and all of a sudden there's, there's dropping like flies at the back and he gets his call up and and, a, and such a huge game for Scotland. It's not just a friendly, it's not, a, it's, not it's yeah. a huge game and to go and keep a clean sheet over there and play the way he played <coughs> is, is absolutely outstanding. And, but you see, the thing is, the Hibs supporters are no surprise at that. Hibs supporters have seen him put their performances in for Hibs year after year. Yeah. And people that watch highlights, Rangers fans, Motherwell fans, St Mullen fans, watch highlights and see him making a mistake, they just think, oh, he's rotten, he's yeah. a bomb scared. But he's no, I've watched him, obviously, with Hibs TV for two years. He's a top player if he, if, he, if he concentrates for 90 minutes. And last night he concentrated for the full 94 minutes. There was no, no lapse in concentration, lapse in focus, letting somebody run off him. He was totally focused for 94 minutes, and if he does that consistently, he can play an English Premiership. Mm -hmm. How does it work with Hubs TV? If you did think it was a bomb scare and you said as much, would you get bumped? <laughs> Aye. Would you? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just yeah. interested. Yeah, Club you know, TV, absolutely. Oh. I've a few guys, me with a few on the radio waves who work with Club TV, and some of them they say they've got different, you know, some of them need to watch their P's and yeah. Q's. Yeah. Other ones say they don't because they want the fans watching at home to get a bit of honesty in that, so they don't want it to be like a whitewash job, you know? So I'm just into no, it. I, yeah. I was always very honest on Hibs TV, but I remember we were playing St Johnson away from home, and we were getting beat one nothing, and me and the boy Cliff Pike, the main commentator, were a wee bit... The Hibs were poor, and we, we called, called it as it was. Yeah. The Hibs were poor, and a text message came through for Ron Gordon, oh. listening in America, saying, oh, can you please stop the negativity about the team and, yeah. and, and start uh, being more positive? Well, to be Hibs fair, rotten. that's where club football... So that, um, that, was, that, that was an issue for me, yeah. and the second year I was there as well. The, the owner wasn't happy with you know, us calling it as, as we've seen it. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, there's a difficult balancing act on uh, these uh, sort of things. Um, I know one of our, uh, our companies who cover the club football when it was in, in COVID said, look, there's, um, there's four games um, that the, the commentator can't make it for Celtic TV. Would you go in and do the games for us in this right. contract? And I said, well, absolutely, I'll go in and, and commentate for them. And it, and it was four games <laughs> in the middle of Neil Lennon's <laughs> Car crash right. and basically they got battered twice, had a draw and a and a win, and they were rank rotten, um, you know. But uh, again, uh, he could have been the greatest commentator in the world. 
you know, you were getting slaughtered yeah. because they've been they've been done in. Um, not that I said anything too detrimental, but they were getting battered. They lost, I think, two nothing to St Mirren at Celtic Park. Um, so these things happen. Kevin McFarlane, who's a big fan of Ryan Porteous, by the way, but Kevin's got selective hearing. He says, Peter's backtracking. Never had a good word about Porteous <laughs> in the past. Um, I think I actually mentioned on this programme, I think I would mentioned on this programme, if, if I was obviously not Rangers, because Rangers fans don't like him, and I don't think he would ever have signed for Rangers, um, just because of that needle that's going on. I, I did suggest that Celtic should sign him, um, because I think he's good coming out from the back. I think he's a good passer of the ball. Um, but whether he's at that level, who knows? The one thing about it I would say to Kevin is it's one game for the boy. It's yeah, great. It's he deserves really all the adulation uh, and you know all the praise that's coming his way. Absolutely merited. He just needs, and I think this is the one thing that I would say to you, uh, you know, I think maybe, and his dad's his biggest, his number one fan said, maybe if he had someone in there that was able to put their arm around him and say, this here's the way you should play the thing you need to calm down here you know somebody with an arm around his shoulder and the club's not been stable for the last couple of years and I think he's I think he's gone I think he's gone backwards in his development or if he hasn't gone backwards I think he was stagnant because I don't think there's anybody there Tam that turned around a really good person an, an older experienced person even a legend that could have sat down with him and said listen son don't pander to the nutcases. Don't start smile. I mean, if there's a wee bit of your game that's a, a noise up, great. Every, you know, so it's Scott Brown, don't take that away from him. <coughs> but you've got to develop. You've got to stop picking up yellow cards. You've got to be aware that if you want to impose yourself as a really good player, this is how you've got to take it to the next level. I, th I think this season, I've, I've seen a noticeable difference in him. I think he's some of the antics, you know, over the last couple of seasons. You can understand why opposition supporters wouldn't like it. He yeah. would flop down to the ground when somebody would come near him. He was flying into tackles. You know, and last night you never seen that. You seen a mature performance. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's grown up, maybe the pennies dropped with him. Uh, you know, getting sent off a few times, letting the club down or whatever and getting the stick. Last night he showed a really mature performance. There was no antics. It was total football, total concentration for 94 minutes and he put in his best performance that he has this season because I don't think he started the season particularly well with Hibs um, maybe because he's out of contract and there's, there's a few clubs looking at him but last night was a, was, a, was a total difference in him in terms of a mature performance and complete concentration for 90 minutes and, and maybe that was a watershed moment for him you know because all the daftness that went on before it right up almost to his appearance last night with the stuff still rumbling on yeah. um, about Jim Goodwin and then maybe a lot of um, observers um, basing a lot of what they thought about Ryan Portis on that recent carry on you, you would hope that for his sake that he could just kind of you know wipe the slate clean now and go on with what could be a great career well Hugh mentions and Hugh comes on and puts a lot of good points across in our feed says uh, Peter he could do with a Davy Weir type to play alongside you know it's amazing see if you get alongside someone who's an experienced player how they can absolutely bring you on you know and just guide you through things uh, games Teach, teach you some of the things that they've learned throughout their, uh, their life. Sometimes it can make a huge impact on you. Um, so, uh, good point, Hugh, but um, where he goes after this, I think that, that performance last night certainly enhanced it. A word on Hickey. I mean, honestly, he had the cigars out at some, at some points last night. I think he's I think he's a tremendous player. I think that he's, he's, he's moved to Serie A. His, he's, he's at, he's, his total performance and his defensive duties have went through the roof. I think he's been brilliant. And uh, he's earned a big move to Brentford. He's quick. He's strong. He's very two-footed. You know, I, I, I don't know what foot Alan Hickey kicks with. I think that's a great compliment yeah. to him. I don't know what, what side he's stronger at. So he's, he's got balance in both feet. He can play in either fullback area. He's, I think he's a tremendous young player. And his strength as well. I mean, he'd have assumed that he was going to uh, get a call for the stretcher. Uh, when that Ukrainian boy went in, and absolutely yeah. took him out. I mean, that, that was horrendous. Yeah. Uh, and every angle you saw, you thought, dearly me. But next thing you saw, he was up and he was running He's the back up his own. You know, it was yeah. great. Um, Craig Gordon, Tom, this is, it's great, 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 <laughs> great news for anybody who wants to up me up all night, know that you've, your wife's had a baby, and then obviously suddenly you're, you're putting in performances, making that great saves. He's been unbelievable. He's nudging 40, and for him to still be able to do that, you know. And he's great as a goalkeeper as well. But <laughs> <laughs> no, we congratulate him, young Axel. Young Axel, that was the, the name he gave yes, the young it's, boy. Yes, it's quite an unusual it name. Was, for but, a... uh, well, somebody said to me, and I think he meant it, that 
the, a guy was making out, you'll, you'll be able to back me up on this, and I'm struggling to get the detail right, but somebody was making out that the baby wasn't actually due for another six weeks or so. Uh -huh. And then, if he was a Guns N' Roses fan, it would have been an Axel Wayne. And I believe, sorry, it would have been a November Wayne. And I believe Guns N' Roses had a big hit with November Ember Rain. Wayne. Yes. Right, right. Well, that sounds a bit convoluted, you know. Okay. The other reasons for Axel, the funniest one I heard, we asked the listeners <laughs> about it on Sunday, and somebody said, why, 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 we asked, why would he call the way an Axel? We're assuming it's a Guns N' Roses connection, yeah. right? Uh, but the best one we got was uh, apparently Craig Gordon, he was at the Scotland camp, obviously, when the Wayne was born, and he'd got up and asked uh, Stevie Clark, how do you spell Alex? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually... It takes a bit of balls to name your own axle. Well, you think, need to be like a big professional footballer or something, you I know? Think, I think Anybody other, else would get slaughtered. I think his other kid is called Ace. Oh, is it Ace? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And his missus is, is it Summer? Yeah. Her name is. So yeah. there you go. He, 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 he must feel like a twat. <laughs> Do you know about the a name like Craig? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. No, yeah. good on him. And again last night, I mean, there was what was the one save in particular that the boy, it was oh. Craig Gordon's left hand side. Uh, it, it, it was Midrick. Oh, oh, it, it, it was a couple. It was a couple. It was again, see, realistically, I, I, I actually thought it was only we were talking about in the radio. I thought he was already 40. I don't think he's 40 until uh, November. But realistically, you look up, right? He's like stick thin. He's very agile, he's brilliant in goals. How, in this day and age with sports scientists and every player professional eats all the right things and they're fat, etc. How, how long could he possibly play? Would you 45, think? I think. Uh, is Buffon no still playing? Um, he's retired. I think he's about 40, 45. Is that right? Uh, that, that's, that's that's I think the thing with Craig Gordon is he missed a large chunk of his career through injury. So he's, yeah. he's probably thinking to himself, meeting up for a lost time in terms of... In terms of games? Yeah, well, listen, um, Steve Clark, certainly in a buoyant mood, as you mentioned, this was what he had to say after the game, which was incredible. And who could deny him the chance? We pressed a, a big button to reset and go again. Uh, it's been three fantastic performances, all different but vital. I asked the players to take the next step to show everyone we are improving and we know how to get to that last step. Um, I don't use the word glorious failure, um, but said to make sure we take the next step because we'll feel good about ourselves. Now we've reached Group A and we're in pot two for the draw. We don't want to stop. We've got a playoff, but I don't think with this uh, group of players we will need it. Mm. What, a, what a great line of confidence from him, eh? It was great, but of course the wee thing he added to that was, uh, and as a joke, Hopefully it was uh, and good luck to the new manager because his contract is up soon, <laughs> and he made a point to mention that. But yeah. let's let's be honest, we're all talking about this almost being miraculous. Uh, what Scotland have achieved, and particularly last night, when you look at the depleted squad, the depleted uh, opening lineup, etc., etc. You can't tell me there's no um, chairman of clubs south of the border looking at Stevie Clark, who'd already a great name down there. And, and, and thinking, you know, this guy, he's not an old man. Yeah. You know, there, there must be clubs looking at him now. Well, I think the one saving grace from it all, Tam, is I think when they sit down with him for his negotiations, it really suits him, this job. Because basically, he doesn't need to bring his family up from London, so he doesn't need to subject them to um, the sectarian nonsense, which I think was a real concern for him. And also, you know, he's able to work that pattern of living down there and then coming up when it's necessary going to see the games that he wants so well, he, can, he, can actually plan it, he can plan it all out right well what I would say then Peter well a London club well they know swoop for, like, for chairman of a London club listening to what you just said yeah I'd be straight in for him just, just out of curiosity tell me which London club at the moment is likely to employ Steve Clark well uh, well, uh, you, Peter you can never rule anything out in English football you no, know that absolutely no but Conti's Conti's looks as if he's got a plan for Tottenham Arteta is slowly but surely really winning over the Arsenal fans and the boys well he could be the Chelsea manager <laughs> Because <laughs> they never really keep anybody but longer. You know, I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not I'm just, I'm just what? astounded. What? He's not a big he's enough a, name. He's a Chelsea legend. Nah, he's, mm. he's not going to Tom. Chelsea. Steve Clark. No, I'm Chelsea. not saying he's going to Chelsea. He's a Chelsea I'm legend. Not. He is the classic as player. As a player. He's a Chelsea I mean, they gave Frank Lampard the job, for God's sake. Give me peace. 
Steve Clark is a Chelsea you one legend. Peter Lampard. Peter, you know how it is. Not Peter. a legend in Lampard. I never said he was a bigger legend than Lampard. I'm saying to you, he's a Chelsea legend. No. He's the perfect type of person. Peter, you know how there. it works. And I think if I was Stevie Clark, I'd get some friends in the media to at least before his contract talk oh. for Jubilee SFA get some friends in the media to mention some of the clubs that are yeah. interested in well, him I, and then he can go in there and name his price I, I think uh, I think they'll give him a bigger deal because I think when you look at it, we were actually analysing of the Scotland managers who is you know of the Scotland managers we've had over the, the, the past decade and beyond Alex McLeish got as close with Walter Smith oh. at the start of it mm -hmm. um and then after that, I thought Gordon Strachan was a was a good Scotland manager who kind of a, almost galvanised the nation again when we're flat. But it came, came so close and much to his agony, couldn't deliver in the big games that he, he, he wanted to. But Steve Clark has delivered big time, hasn't he? No, he has. I think his record's phenomenal. And he could get us to two major tournaments. You know, forget the Euros again. Yeah. Unfortunately, the World Cup's just a, a sickening. It's going to be sickening for every Scotland fan when we, when we tune into in Qatar in November and we're not there. You know, you look at Wales, you know, Ukraine. I just think they got Ukraine at the wrong time. You know, if they got Ukraine, you know, a little bit later, you know, there was so much emotion attached to that game uh, for them and for us and I think they got them at the wrong You're time. Right. And that won't kick in until the yeah. World Cup starts. Yeah. And the only thing, I, I, I wonder if it'll be worse because World Cups, did every World Cup that you've been old enough to watch in the past, um, I've no mind it if I've maybe been sitting next to a pool in Florida and kind of half watching over your shoulder I've been lying out there in a nice hotel in Las Vegas I get away from it now, and going to the wee cocktail bar and watching the other games but when it gets into what for us is going to be a cold, dreek <laughs> winter and uh, you know, there's no escape, you know but you of course will be watching each and every game coming through the telly and Scotland are not going to be there it's yeah. harder to ignore when uh, it's not the summer. Yeah. Um, well, you've really, you've really, <laughs> <laughs> you've really, you've really put us on a downer for the winter. Of course. And the, now, and the heat bills have got And of course, I was just about to say, he's, he's going to be sitting there with a big parker <laughs> from uh, South Park on. <laughs> and, he's, and he'll have no electricity. And he's going to be sitting there thinking, the rates in this house are through the roof. Right. Any more bad news you've got no. for us, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, it's all good. Right, okay. Um, anyway, uh, as far as the, the nations are concerned, that we can, I mean, the Nations League pots, Tam, it's mm -hmm. great to view it because, as you can see, we, we'll be in, you know, suddenly we're in a situation where th this playoff uh, draw, um, we could actually end up, we could actually end up playing uh, some of the, some of the say I don't know what that draw is all about there. In the, we're in the pot four in the no, 2020. We're in pot no, we're in pot two. I don't know how that pot has got there with us in pot four. Um, but nevertheless, we, we've got some real teams there that we could actually be playing against that we've, we've longed for again, playing the big teams. Yeah, I think when I mean, you look at pot one, you know, you've got your Spain, your Portugal, Italy, you know, teams like that who would be very, very tough, Holland. But when you look at pot two, strong teams in there as well. But pot three and pot four, and I think there's a, a couple of teams in pot five. Yeah, there's absolutely no nothing to fear uh, in, in the Euros draw, and and for us, so I think that draw. You know, Steve Clark's right. You know, if we get an approach it the way we've been playing, yeah, you know, we wouldn't fear anybody in pot three or four. Yeah, semi final and um, final for the playoffs that we've managed to get to. We could be playing Israel and Serbia again. I mean, Israel, Tam. Tam, it's, like it's turning into an old film game, isn't it? We, Israel. Just, we just play them all the time. Uh, I know. But again, every game, if you're struggling, uh, have a wee fiver on a correct score or something. You know, it's, it's an international game and it's going to be a big. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of them that we've played Israel in the past and it could be, ah, you know, we'll watch it, we'll not watch it, we'll watch the highlights tonight. You know, they, they, yeah. these are big games. That's what happens when you get a wee bit of success. Were you a big Scotland fan when you were a kid, Tam? Yes. Did you go to the games? Uh, oh, I thought you were going to ask me about Israel because Israel, uh, mind the man Kenny Dalglish scored against them away. Was it in Tel Aviv, 1981? Yeah. I always remember um, the, we all were allowed into the, the TV room, as it was, the television room at the primary school. And this was a big, big event. Stuff like this never happened at school. And they wheeled in, mind the way the school tellies were always in a big trolley thing, Peter. <laughs> uh, they wheeled them in. And, um, and exactly, I'm talking as if you're 14, you're lovely. <laughs> But anyhow, they wheeled that in, and what a treat that was, sitting in the telly room, and we got to watch the Israel versus Scotland, and it was Kenny Dalglish, 
I think the ball fell to him about six yards out or so and he blasted it into the roof of the net. Uh, in the back of your corner, it was great. Yeah, see that group, by the way, that we looked at there oh. with, with complete and utter mystery. Um, our journals have just said to us, that's who we can draw in the next Nations League. Oh, right, I thought it was Euro, I thought it was Europop. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, so um, that, that the next of, Nations League group. That kind when, of clarifies that? it. <laughs> that's <laughs> don't confuse it, we've just all got a read. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Euro all, next all I would say to you, and I apologize to people <laughs> of a certain age, right, uh, who. <laughs> <laughs> who will not get this right. right but if you want to know exactly what's happening with the semi-final and the final draw and then of course next month the the, the big draw um, then watch Danny Kay and Court Jester because, <laughs> because, because <laughs> yes. the, the answer is in that movie I've okay it's, uh, I'll just say to you the vessel with the pestle <laughs> That'll give you the answer. Uh, Danny Kay, no, but some of your older viewers will love that. Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's so bloody complicated. The fact is, we've got two chances to make it. Yeah, and we might not need to make. Might need to, uh, one of those chances. Yeah, I, I think well, I, either way, I think we're going to make it. I think the way we're playing now, the, the, the strength and depth we've got, the quality we've got. I think that uh, either or, I, I wouldn't fear anybody at the minute the way Scotland are playing. No. No. Um, what about a look at the overall I'm going to show you the group table uh, Tam because that's fantastic I think we thought uh, Ruffy and I thought that, that Scotland would get a draw Tam said he thought Ukraine would win um, so I thought I'd keep that to this section of the show uh, basically because Tam, Tam he was so hell bent in getting in his predictions over Portis mm. but look at that and, and just for clarity if we had a finished second Zip, nothing. Zip, nothing. We had to win the group. Had right. to win the okay. group. Because it's a, it's a valid question this day and age. You know the way European football is, and oh, if you're finished there, don't worry, you get into that. Oh, and if uh, you finish there, you then go into that. Yeah. So um, it, that's quite good for a start. It's brilliant. It's and, only the winners. And get, by the way, look at advance. Have a look at the players that didn't play, Aye. that were not available last night, Tom. Aye. I mean, we managed to come up with 11, 11 of them. Just a team. McLaughlin, Hanley, McKenna, Tierney. Patterson, Ferguson, McTomney and Robertson and then Turnbull, Jacob Brown and, and Ross Stewart. I mean that's not a that's not a bad eleven under normal circumstances, you know, for a for a friendly match, never mind a, a, a main game. And you could add somebody like Billy Gilmer in there as well, who who didn't kick a ball. Unfortunately, he was a, he was a mainstay for us yeah. when, he, when he was playing down the road at, when he was playing at Chelsea and, and Latterly at Norwich. Um, so we've got we've got we've got serious strength and depth in certain areas, middle of the Aye. park. Full back area, yeah. Centre half now, and maybe fun. It's still place. just you want somebody when the ball lands at them six yards out after a deflection or the ball hitting the post or coming in for a corner that bang, you know, he's going to hit the back Lee of Griffiths the net. Still, he's still, we always talk about him. Lee Griffiths, if he finds a club and gets bang goals in, <laughs> I've still been saying that he was 43, he was the same with Derek Ryland. Well, now I, I just think you know, when you've got Che Adams there, I, I mean, I really like. Jay Adams, I, I think I he works, player, right? works his socks off. He's brilliant. And Dykes, um, again, equally offers us something different. We were crying out for that. I would just love us to have a central defensive pairing that you were like, you were like Miller and McLeish. You, know, you were looking at saying to yourself, that's exactly who's going to start there. And, and you could rely on it, you know. Um, in fact, I could go back to the days of some people talk, will remember, you know, we were looking, we were saying, oh, I hope Gordon McQueen's fit, or I hope Jim Holton's fit. There's aye, a name from the aye. past. And by the way, uh, don't forget, you can put your um, points to us on the programme. Try and keep them decent. It is about uh, Scotland that we were talking about there. We'll look ahead to some of the weekend's uh, games as well, because Tam's here. Um, and both Tams will give us their thoughts on the weekend's football. Uh, we'll also give you details of how to win Ruffy's uh, signed gloves. Um, try and keep it clean. Um, and also Chris Witt, um, uh, you'll have to obviously maybe go and look elsewhere for the type of show you're looking for, Chris. Um, Witt, uh, I don't think is at the top of your priority. Tam's a Muddle fan. Tam works in Hibs TV and has played for Hibs. Uh, and you know, <laughs> right, all right, just, all right, I just thought, right, right, guess just, what we are no, today. Well, exactly. Right, Honestly, I look at some people. I look at some oh, people. You, well, there's the phrase. Is this, there's the, is this Celtic TV? There's, the, right, there's, the, phrase, there's the phrase. There's the phrase. There's the phrase. There's the phrase. I just got to yes, do that, you know. Yes, and by the way, I, I, I talk about that from a social media point of view, so we can try and keep it all nice, uh, Tom. Is rather disturbingly, you, you, one of your boys yesterday on the show it was great listening to Stephen O'Donnell, but. He was really open about the abuse that he had taken on 
uh, social media, especially uh, especially Twitter, about e even his family. Which yeah, I, it was I, think, crap. I mean, I don't think he put a foot wrong, really, when he was when he was asked. He didn't do anything um, for sure. the all for for uh, Stevie Clark, and I thought he's been really good. I mean, I I, 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 I was absolutely full of my praise him just the other week. He was on then uh, sitting in the sofa for the BBC um, after one of the Scotland games, and he basically said more or less, "I think Stevie Clark should kind of stick with that team now." And let them gel, and yeah. then we'll get better and better. Now this is a guy who is part of the squad. The Twenty six cars, and, and he was more or less saying, "Okay, go with you guys." As if don't doesn't matter about me, you know. And I thought yeah. that was that was very very kind of mag magnanimous, you know. I actually yeah. found that a wee bit sad, but no. And he appears, you know, I mean, he, he, to be a wee bit. Um, out the picture uh, at Mullable. No, I did uh, ask him. Certainly. He's coming back from injury and McGinn's been doing the business. Right, said, aye, so. McGinn's been apart from the incredible set up of, of course, against Hearts. Yeah. Which, um, oh, let's not dwell on it. Aye, I know. Yeah. We go. One of the many you missed against but them. The, aye. I mean, I've never seen, no. Uh, I know you're going to talk about domestic stuff, but to see. Um, well, I mean, the change under Stevie Hamill's been incredible. I don't know Tam how much you've seen him at all, but to get to get a now now with Dundee United, standing ovation for the fans. We absolutely pummeled him, and then a zero three against Hearts, and they got a standing ovation as well yeah. because they had played so well. And it was, you know, I'm, 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 I was through a thing on Sunday at the Gorgie Suite actually at Pine Castle, and uh, I was talking to a lot of Hearts fans, and all of them said to a man, they couldn't believe. <laughs> They couldn't believe I think how much that would have cost Frank McAvenny. They couldn't <laughs> believe they couldn't, they couldn't believe uh, that that had finished three 0 You know, I mean Hearts took their chances, don't get me wrong, but but Mullow were absolutely brilliant. So we'll be fine uh, under Stevie Hamill, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alan Clark says it's a great show. I'm watching live from Santa Cruz oh. County in California. Wow. Um, and he was at now top and then he went to DL. Um, it's obviously a bit of money, Alan. Um, <laughs> Motherwell fans is 1968. Wow. Well, loves the show, um, which is great. Um, I, I mean, California I was there in the summer, not Santa Cruz, but um, absolutely fantastic. Just, you've got to do that, Tam, go down the West Coast. I keep fancying it with the old open top car and all the rest of it. Well, for you, it's a, for you, it's a Winnebago. Right. It's the Winnebago with the wife, the daughter, the Motherwell scarf outside the window, and then, oh, you know. Yeah. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to take the bun with it anyways. I mean, I'll have to walk home and it's fine. But uh, no, I, I've always fancied doing that. Another one that I would, I would urge you to do in America, just apropos of nothing, yeah. is uh, we did it in a whim once, me and my big mate Graham, who later became my best man. We were over in uh, New York and we were going to eventually end up in uh, Vegas and fly her, but we flew from um, New Orleans after we had done a wee 18 hour train journey for New York, down to New Orleans, Oof. where you sit in the train like that, you get your own big carriage and it's just a, a wall to ceiling like window, you've got a guy that chaps in your door every stop you make if you want anything like brought to you, drink, yeah. cigarettes, magazines, anything like that. It was pre sophie and, and it was, oh yes, I, yeah, yeah. and it was, um, it was magnificent, it was, it was the way to travel and you saw so much in America, so if you find yourself in New York yeah. and think, one will do something a bit different, train down to New Orleans. Well, I have to tell you, the next thing in the bucket list um, is absolutely, uh, New Orleans is on it, but uh, Memphis. Oh, I have been there. I did that. Yeah. Elvis. Great, and I know, nice uh, kind of, you know, spoiler. Say spoiler alert, but yeah. the way they do the tour, is it good? With the finale to the tour, in MD tuned, I don't know exactly what I mean, it's like, <gasps> it's great. Is that right? Aye. That's our next one in the I bucket list. I thought yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's just <laughs> just <laughs> oh, yeah, well. <laughs> No, it's it's the way they date it's my <clears throat> listen, um these are the gloves. Somebody says I mean somebody says these look brand new. It's roughy. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not exactly going to be under any great pressure. Yeah, really. from McGreaves, didn't they sponsor this? So. Yes, they, they actually, he did mention that. They, he spon this is, was his sponsor. So he's going to sign them for us. And it's nice for somebody as well. Are we getting the answer just now? No, no. No, because no. that's what you tell me after the show. Yes, the, question. the question is quite simply Who scored a double when oh, Scotland beat Hall in 3 2 and 7 8? Yeah. Don't, uh, don't. I know, I've got it doing it to two because it only could be two. But exactly. So, right. that, I mean, that we'll pick a winner. We've won a penalty. <clears throat> yes. All you have to do is quite simply. Oh, I've got the answer. Subscribe to the channel 
and then put your answer down in the feed or indeed you can put it in uh, some people have been actually putting it in the Facebook Messenger to us as well which we all accept as long as you hit the subscribe button but uh, sign it fantastic thoroughly enjoy um, the crack with it I'll tell you another thing I read in an article and it, and it Johnny um, Evans got his 100th cap for yeah. uh, uh, Northern Ireland and the amount of tributes from his teammates. Did you see the video of the tributes? I did. It was uh, fantastic, it, wasn't it? Some great players that play for Northern Ireland. Um, to get 100 caps you know, for any country is, is fantastic. Obviously joined Steve Davis yeah. in, the, in the 100 cap group. but. Steve Davis 140. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, I think if Steve Davis got 147, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it wouldn't would then chucked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, um, Steve Davis, I, I think he's a brilliant lad, great player, um, and and I think he's got the right attitude, which is Tammy just wants to play for as long as he can exactly. before he makes that serious decision about it. Exactly. And you we're know? talking about Craig Gordon um, earlier and, and his longevity. And the bottom line is a lot of the stuff that we were talking about with him. About, about diet, about fitness, about sports scientists. It applies, of course, as well in outfield players. So, you know, gone are the days when, you know, we hear, obviously, you hear about, uh, you know, injuries in the past. I had a good chat last week with Jim Duffy, and he was waxing lyrical, of course, about Andy Ritchie. Yeah. And you keep forgetting, you know, and I think 29, and he was as good as chucked it, you know. Yeah. Now, of course, he did have issues with, I think, mainly his, his, his knees and stuff, but it wasn't really that uncommon. Once upon a time, probably when the, the old phrase was first hatched about, <coughs> oh, it's not a long career, a football player, you know. Yeah. And there were guys who were thinking they were veterans. I mean, this is my weekly David Cooper mention, but when David Cooper came to uh, Mother, he was 33, right? Yeah. And I remember, <laughs> I think I was obviously young, you thought, as if you were getting an old man. Now, you look at players that are cutting about the route, 33. You know, it's outrageous. The, the, the players, will, they'll, they'll keep going for years and years to come. Absolutely. That's the way the game is going. Yeah, um, it's a good point by Stephen McNamara. And, and Stephen, I, I, I would like to highlight your point because uh, the amount of people who watch the programme and are mentioning that they watch the programme <coughs> near and far to our journalists, to, to us, and when we're out, um, they're mentioning it. And the, there's a lot of younger people, you know uh, analytics is like when you're looking at who's watching a lot of younger people watch it Stephen McNamara says Peter you could get Joe Hart Alan McGregor or Craig Gordon to sign the gloves for our younger viewers so mm. it's a very good point so I'll make a point I'm going to go out of my way to get Craig Gordon to sign a set good and we'll give them away in the programme what about Joe Hart no it's no. right no. okay <laughs> <laughs> You met Joe? Uh, no, he's a nice guy. I tell you that side, isn't it? I'm, I met only you. I don't think Tam will get us. You'll get us, right? Yeah. But I'm, I met him a few weeks ago, and the gentleman introduced us. It was in a hotel in um, Glasgow, yep. and Joe was there with his wife. You know, and this guy being very posh, he says, Oh, Tam, Tam, can I introduce this as um, Joe? As if I didn't know who he was, Joe Hart, you know? Yeah. And then he said to me, And you, I think you'll get this. He said to me, and I just blushed after it. He said, And this is Mrs. Hart. Uh -huh. And I said, She's gorgeous. <laughs> I made that. I made that attack myself. <laughs> now, would you like to explain that, right. Tom? Well, of course. By the way, at the time, was she ho was she holding a little dog? <laughs> was she? I was a wee dog. Well, I can't remember. What Anyhow, that was a program called Heart to Heart. I mean, you can still you see it. No, no, it's gone. He's, he, he, oh, can't remember it. Still showing up. And then who was, old Max, who, the butler. Max was the butler. Max but who was He did this voiceover about, and he was talking about uh, Jonathan and Jennifer Hart. Yeah. And he goes, "That's Jonathan Hart. He's my boss." <laughs> and then the show Jennifer Hart, who was played by Stephanie Powell. Oh. Oh, that's what I was just about to I, ask you. And then, and that's was it Robert Wagner? <laughs> I, Robert Wagner. Yeah. And he says, and that's, these are the opening titles, right? <laughs> and that's Mrs. Hart. She's gorgeous. <laughs> right? So just the way this guy, it just, it just came out of nowhere. And I realised I'd made an absolute <laughs> yeah. tatty myself, right? <laughs> but, but, but to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> and they were too young to get out. Oh, but you, oh, you, you who's older, <laughs> was standing there next to Joe Hart's wife. <laughs> she's gorgeous. <laughs> I don't want you to do it. I'm just like, you know me if you don't. <laughs> but anyhow, I actually then had that embarrassing thing after I had to explain it all. So it didn't hang I was a moron. Oh, you know? Hugh Scott has come up. Hugh, I love, I love the fact you watch the programme uh, because. Um, Gary Connor says, Peter, it was your Doug Henrik. <laughs> uh, freeway. Free, well, that, 
Right, am I right? Hugh Scott has just said the dog was free well done. Hugh, brilliant. You need to watch it, they still show it on, I'm trying to remember the drama Tam. channel or yesterday or something. Tam. There's box sets that you can watch before heart to heart. To be fair, honest with you. Um, although I have to say to you, the best box set I've just bought, Tam, is absolutely fantastic. What's that? I bought the box set for Cheers. Oh. Brilliant. Again, I could recite them all. Did yes. you not know, get it online? Rather than oh, I tried it, I wanted to get it on Let's like, Sky. Well, it's, it's, I think it's a Disney channel, they know that I'll rerun that. Channel 4 used to continually show it in a yes. right? You got a double bill every morning at half six, Monday to Friday. They're now showing, instead of cheers, everybody loves Raymond. Yes, I is. don't. No. Have you ever watched that? It's <laughs> absolute <laughs> cat. Exactly. Fraser Stallone, that's about it. He's even got Raymond designed the gloves as well. Aye. Aye. <laughs> that's a great point, Stephen Mike Namara. We will get um, Craig Gordon, we'll get on his case. Um, and I'll get through to Edinburgh and get him to sign them as well. I think that's perfectly feasible for us. Um, but, sorry, for the older viewers, <laughs> Ruffy's gloves signed. Who scored the two goals for Scotland? Um, and. Uh, Great that we're on such a high time um, from, you know, the Scotland game and fair play to Steve Clark and great for the boys. Congratulations, you deserve all the praise that's coming your way. And then suddenly you go back to domestic oh, football. I, think, and, I don't like international football. Do you, what? No, no. I've, you don't like the break? No, I, I've not liked it for ages. See, so scarred by too many breaks when we've been mince. Yeah, so, but yeah. this, this one was bearable, but I still agree with what Tam said. Club there, is, there is no comparison. Club yep. Fatma. No, uh, that's, but is that not because you guys, you know, like me, you work in the industry and it, it kind of a goes quiet for a wee while? I mean, uh, were you a Scotland fan as you were younger? Yeah, I've watched the games, but, but I, you're I not, I you weren't a huge Scotland fan. You wouldn't go to the game. Well, I'm I mean, the same, and for me, it was always Motherwell first, then Scotland. Well, well, I get where you're coming from from that, but I, I, I wouldn't I choose my Scotland games, put it oh, that way. Go oh, no, no, we would, we would go. I mean, right. myself and uh, Kenny and Davy Moyes and uh, Neely, my mate, and a few other uh, guys, Eric McAleer, we would all get in the car pff, away uh, to Italy, away to the Euro 96, right. you know, following Scotland. It was great. Um, get the tickets for the games. I mean, is there, a, is there a, I mean, apart from obviously France, which everybody loves because of James McFadden's goal. As a kid, is there a game that you loved, Scotland, that sticks in your memory? Uh, when it, well, I was lucky enough to be there. Do you remember? The t I wasn't a kid, but you remember we took six off Yugoslavia? What? Remember that game? No. Look up the record books, aye. Yeah. I Were you there? Was that a friendly? And I went there, aye, with a couple of pals. And that was plenty decent. Yeah. But, um, Tom? Aye. The one that sticks in my mind is, uh, is Alan McCoy school in Euro 96. Against, was it against Switzerland? Switzerland. Uh, it, was that, it was at Villa Park. Yeah, well, I've, yeah. I, that was the one that sticks in my <coughs> mind. And then, obviously, it looks as if we're going to get through because England were pumping Holland. Yeah. Do you remember? And Holland yeah. got a last minute goal. I four, threw, four, one threw or something legs. 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 Uh, Do you remember who scored? For Holland? For Holland. Uh, Beckham. Right, right card. No. Cliver. So, so. Ask Hugh Scott about the. He's good. He's on fire the day. Yeah, about Hughes. Yugoslavia. I'm sure it was oh, Yugoslavia, six, Scotland. Six. Scotland, Scotland. I think we won 6 1. Yeah. Um, and Robert Rowan says, Well done, Peter. You managed to get David Moyes' name in. <laughs> 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 anyway, my favourite, my favourite, he's, he's doing okay. Come back again. Yeah, right. he's, okay. he's all right. Um, my favourite. see him tearing a strip off the guy in the press Oh, yes. Yeah. It's called a Moise. Moise. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, what I know. Good one. 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 Good There's that many folks. See, honestly, as you'll, as you'll back me up on this, yeah. the amount of times they are, um, more than 95% of the time, unless it slips out otherwise, Alan off to me is Alan. You've heard me talk yeah. to him, you know. I think, and I, I, I knew, knew and again I slip in a roughy, but in saying that, I've been a regular in his company now for a, for a couple of years. Yeah. I've socialised with him, so that's fine. But I hate that kind of, you know, when you hear, as that journalist did there. Tav. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tav. Tav. Yeah. You know, <coughs> Tav, I, David you know. Martin Dale. Hugh Scott oh, says. Is that right, aye? Yeah, oh, exactly. Of course, Tav does. <coughs> he does what Tav does. Yes, right. yeah. Yeah. Hugh Scott says, Tam, I was there that night. We beat Yugoslavia 6-1. Yay! Cooper. Which soon as Charlie Nick scored. Um, go. So there you are, he was on the case. <coughs> Mines is 1973. Um, <laughs> Scotland versus uh, Czechoslovakia. Great. Joe Jordan. Me 30th birthday present. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I was there as a kid and he had the number 16 in his back and uh, Arthur Montfort's finest commentary. No need to over elaborate. <coughs> Morgan, Jordan, goal. Aye. <laughs> Three aye, words. Aye. Summed it all up. You knew aye. exactly where the ball was and you knew where it ended up. 
Anyway, uh, so Buckin, what was it? Buckin, Macari, Douglas. Uh, oh. Buckin on the overlap. <laughs> uh, uh, Arthur didn't exactly. You didn't need to waffle and all that stuff. The game takes care of itself. Punters can sit there and watch it. Yeah, we can. Lost it snooker. You watch a snooker, Tom. No, no, I lost it. That uh, was I, uh, John Virgo and uh, Willie Thorne. Yeah. Who constantly it was as if they were getting paid by the word. You know what I mean? Yeah. Snooker is very self-explanatory. The guys up in the yeah. wee booth, they don't need to be constantly talking about. Yeah, worked with oh, Willie Thorne. Did you? Yeah, he was, he was a really nice guy. Ah, lovely um, guy. And he nearly he's he's no longer with us. Is that no longer with us. Yeah. But he nearly quite harrowing and us made it all um, very, very local. In his book, or it might have been an interview that he'd done, he, he was suicidal once or twice in his life while he thought, he was very candid about that. Yeah. A uh, lot of debt and all that, and he was, uh, he, 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 you know, gambling debts. And um, he was apparently, um, at one point, contemplating that why else this will give a wee chill, staying in the Moorings Hotel in Motherwell. Wow. You know, he was up, there was a snooker tournament up, the Scottish Masters, I'm guessing it must have been, yeah. up at the Motherwell Civic Centre. Uh, and a lot of them had stayed down there, and this was one of these uh, Moments. sad occasions in his life where he, he yeah. thought about ending it all, and that, that gave me a wee chill when I heard yeah. that. He's a good lad, funny. <clears throat> I'm just going to ask you here, Tam. It's like that road, it's no far from where we are now, Peter, yeah. that I always remember hearing about when I was a kid that Peter Sutcliffe had driven through it in a, in a van or a lorry or whatever. No, that gave me a wee shiver as well. Anyhow, the European <laughs> Championships. <laughs> no, just a matter of fact. You Scott, you Scott will tell us that. <laughs> Where did Pierce have the time? Oh, oh, but uh, I'm just, right. I think it was uh, maybe talking about John Virgo and two uh, uh, Peter Sutton. <laughs> Oh, I had that mental image. <laughs> but no, that's true. I'm Peter gonna, Sutcliffe. I'm going to have to move now. Peter Sutcliffe was very, very yeah. close okay. to this <laughs> well, studio. If, back that it's, if, that if, some, no, if somebody had said to me, by the way, we're going to be talking about Scotland, Steve Clark, and then at the end of it, Peter Sutcliffe would win right, the program. We're not ending that. Right. Like well, I was just about to say to you, um, Motherwell against Celtic uh, this weekend, Tam, you know, Oh, oh, for all the highs of Scotland, now we're back to club football. You guys have been playing well. We've been playing well. Oh, they are Obviously, Celtic at times have been absolutely on fire. They've got some amazing players. Well, they lost to St Mirren. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That is that. I was just cut. was my third point I was going to make it because that <laughs> might be seen as the absolute kick up the backside that some folk will argue at Celtic were leading. So they'd be no complacency. I don't really. I wouldn't have hand-picked it, put it that way, to no. played Celtic in the back of them losing in sensational uh, fashion to um, St Mirren. Um, but, yep, we've been playing really well. Um, I would really hope that we just have a go. Um, you know, uh, because we, we've known a great record um, against Celtic or Rangers yep. in recent years. We've taken some fair pummelings. And I'll tell you what, before Stevie Hamill took over, um, it's still only relatively a few weeks ago, there would have been a lot of Motherwell fans absolutely dreading uh, what may unfold at Celtic Park <coughs> this weekend, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quietly confident we can get a wee result. Okay, um, Hibs, well, I think he'll get, he, he would love to have been playing in Easter Road because they would get a huge ovation, but Ryan Portis will be back there up at Dingwall against Ross County. Yeah, but by, by, by down the earth with a bump, you know, yeah. to Dingwall from Ukraine and Listen, I think that it's a big game for Hibs. Slowly but surely, they're starting to put results together and a wee bit of consistency, Hibs. <coughs> big Ukrainian striker that's come in, looks looks apart with, with Boyle. I've got McCurdy to come back in, who was suspended. So, he's got, Hibs have got a huge squad. He's got yeah. a big, big squad. <coughs> he's got a lot of players to keep at me. Game of the weekend, undoubtedly, Hearts against Rangers, 12.30, Tynecastle. All the games are on the Saturday. Oh, how often do you get that? But Hearts, Rangers are belter. Ronnie Chapman says, um, you know, it be... 2-1, I think, to, to, to Rangers. It's a, it's a big call, actually, um, this one. Tyne Castle, great. Rangers, not really firing in all cylinders. <coughs> no, I, I, it's always a... Listen, Tyne Castle's always a hard place to go, and you always say about a lot of grounds, but it is, it is a hard place to go. It's a tight pitch. The fans are right on top of you. Hearts, as we know, you know, last season were very consistent, finished third by a long way. They'll be looking to finish third again this season. Great result against Hearts, as Tam said. You know, so they'll fancy their chances against Rangers, but I just think Rangers will have a wee bit too much for them. Yeah. Is that your favourite Scottish ground, Tom? You, you mean, apart from the obvious, yeah. Uh, apart um, from the part, yeah. In terms of, I've got very, very fond memories there, and as I say, the whole the whole day uh, that when we had our first game back there, um, <coughs> the, 
the passing of Phil O'Donnell, that, that, that will always be a special, special memory that yeah. day, but it's great. And again, as well, I don't get me wrong, down through the years, Muddle have had some nice wee uh, results um, at Tyne Castle, including um, at least one league decider in the old first division. So, aye, fond memories are going there. Um, but yeah, just I, I totally agree with what Tam said earlier, though, just getting the domestic stuff back is better, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Um, good luck with the competition. All you have to do is subscribe uh, to the channel if you get a chance. Thank you to so many of you um, who have been subscribing uh, to the channel. Well over 30,000 subscribers um, for a football show that's on five days a week, absolutely free. The figures are fantastic, um, especially covering all the reporters we've got out at the games. Um, and, and lots of our content you are lapping it up and there's more to come you win these roughy gloves if you can tell us uh, who scored two goals in the game where Scotland defeated Holland in the World Cup in 1978 uh, he's going to sign them and because Stephen McNamara mentioned it I'm going to go and get uh, a pair of gloves from Craig Gordon, get him to sign them too and we'll give them away. Fingers crossed. I know Craig well. Um, I took him to my sister's one day for dinner when he was about 18. So, Is that um, right? Yeah. Were you trying to pair them up? No. <laughs> no, 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 I used to hang about with more than a few of the Harps lads oh. when I lived in Edinburgh, so he was a good lad. So it's great to see he, him. He's, he's a lot, he'll, 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 Craig might even look back if he was sitting there to agree with me that he's, he's the his demeanour and everything just now is better than it's ever been. Ah, he, he, there's a wee bit of him just doesn't give two hoots absolutely. about uh, things that probably used to worry him. And he's great. If you get him on the radio and all that, he's absolutely brilliant. Great value. And there's only one thing in life that he hates. Do you yeah. know that? What is it? Bizarre. He told us and we were like, really? He says, I. He's almost scared of them. Custard creams. Right. Okay. There you go. There you are. See it. fact. <laughs> That's why I love him. I just but love him. I've never heard them do that custard creams, and I can get him in the room with Stephen Cragen. Yeah. Stephen Cragen has never had as much of a sip of a hot drink in his life. Tea, coffee, hot chocolate, Ovaltine, you name it. He just never, he just doesn't have hot drinks. And I say, so would you have your a wee biscuit or that? No, well, I just I would have it with a glass of milk or something. But uh, aye. Okay. Well, there's always some guys that you're just never going to hang about with in football, and I think uh, Tam's highlighted one of them. Uh, you hang about with me with stories like that. Ah, I'm getting stuck with me in the corner there, pub. Yeah. You know who doesn't like custard and cream? Oh, oh, oh. the, the mere fact that you've turned around. <laughs> to, the mere up. fact you've turned around to Joe Hart's wife and went, You're gorgeous! <laughs> <laughs> That would have been good. Oh, the guy said. The guy said the, the, the line for the, the actual yeah. line. He says, and this is Missy's heart. <laughs> so I'll write in there. She's gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.